If you recently received a hepatitis vaccination and you're experiencing more shoulder pain than usual, you might have what we call a shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. Now, anytime you get an intramuscular vaccine, the CDC will tell you that at most you will experience some injection site soreness in that area for two, maybe three days. That would, that would subside uh, no more than a week later. In a shoulder injury related to vaccine administration, what we see is prolonged shoulder pain and limited range of motion. So if you've had pain for weeks or even months, you may be entitled to compensation through the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. If you're experiencing shoulder pain that's prolonged, that you're experiencing now for uh, a week or a couple of weeks or even a month, uh, it may be that you're experiencing what we call shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. And if that were the case, you may be entitled to compensation to the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. According to the medical literature on CERBA, or shoulder injuries related to vaccine administration, the most common signs and symptoms of that injury include pain in the shoulder region, limited range of motion, tenderness, and stiffness or weakness in that shoulder. Uh, a lot of people that I talk to will experience a painful range of motion, and, and they'll note it when they're raising their arm above their head, reaching behind their back, or even reaching for their seatbelt in, in their car. Now, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms after a vaccine, it's important that you go see your doctor as soon as possible. Now, when you get to your doctor, uh, most likely they'll have a treatment plan for you. And according to the medical literature on CERVA, the most common forms of treatment include physical therapy, cortisone shot injections, anti-inflammatories or pain medications, and in rare cases, if some of these conservative treatments don't work, uh, there are surgical options as well. One thing to remember as you're treating for your cerva injury is that uh, most of the time your doctor is not going to diagnose you specifically with a cerva injury. Cerva isn't really a diagnosis. It's just a name that we've come up with for this particular injury. Sometimes your doctor might not even be aware of cerva. Um, but what's important is that you get a diagnosis that can be associated with CERVA. And those include any kind of impingement syndrome, frozen shoulder, adhesive capsulitis, a rotator cuff injury, tendonitis, bursitis. These are all inflammatory type injuries to the shoulder joint. And we know that those types of injuries or diagnoses can be associated with CERVA based on the medical literature. Now, if you've experienced a CERVA injury, if, if you have all the signs and symptoms, if you've gone to your doctor and gotten treatment and gotten a diagnosis, you may be entitled to compensation through the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. Now, there are certain basic requirements to filing a petition in this program, especially for a CERVA injury. And those include that you file your petition sooner than three years from the onset of your shoulder symptoms. You also must have symptoms for at least six months before you become eligible in the program. So if you've had shoulder pain, you've gone to the doctor, you've gotten treatment, it's been more than six months since the vaccination, you then may be eligible for compensation through the program. If you are eligible to file in the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, here are the types of compensation available to you. Out-of-pocket medical expenses. So anything not covered by your insurance, like co-pays, deductibles, things of that nature. Any lost wages or earnings as a result of the injury. So if you can't work because of this injury uh, and you have a doctor's note supporting that, and you can document it with you know, wage statements or pay stubs or W-2s, that type of compensation is available as well. Now, both of those types of compensation include future uh, out-of-pocket medical expenses or future lost wages or earnings. So if this is a permanent injury, or precludes you from going back to work entirely, then there are compensation for that into the future as well. And there's no cap on either of those types of damages. And there's also pain and suffering damages, which obviously, like it sounds, tries to compensate you for the severity of your injury, the impact that the injury has on your, your daily life. Um, there is a cap on pain and suffering damages of $250,000. And I would encourage anybody uh, you know, who's listening to this, who, who thinks they may have a cerva injury, to reach out to an attorney uh, to see what your options are. Because the best part about this program, the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, is that it's free to hire an attorney. It's not going to cost you anything. 
whether you're, you're successful, unsuccessful, the attorney's fees are covered under the program. So it's never going to be your responsibility or your worry. I would invite you to contact us uh, to have a free consultation. We can talk to you about your CERVA injury. We can go over your options and see if it's something that we can help you with. If you want to set up a free consultation, call us at 312-578-9501.